Yes, good morning. You're welcome to another beautiful edition of the show Perspectives. You remember that if it happened, it's happening or it's been talked about, then we bring you the gist here on Perspectives. Nothing goes without us bringing it to you here on Perspectives. Yes, I'm here on Perspectives and you know that my name is Yinka Kenny. And as usual, I'm here with Abi Abdul. Good morning, Abi Abdul. How are you? Good morning. Good morning, Yinka. Good morning, viewers. It's a beautiful Saturday. And it's going to happen on Perspectives. Yes. It's really, it's really, really going to happen here on Perspectives. Abi, you want to let it happen? It will happen. Okay. Before, before we start the happening, it's happening to us. Um, we just want to give you the news to make sure that the federal government already approved that 5.4 billion naira, according to the Minister of Labor and Employment, he confirmed the payment of 15.4 billion naira to accommodate payment of shortfall in all ins institutions. 20 billion also has been approved for payment of outstanding arrears of the 20, 2009 and 2012 and academic allowances. I think that's a good one uh, going to ask you now, this time around, because it's high time they resume and um, let the students go back to school. Yes, it is. I hope they do resume on time. I hope, I hope, I hope, because we are going to bring you something about it about, later, yes. later in the studio. Yes, uh, before we start the happenings right now, I want to go on a short break. When we come back, we have a guest in the studio. I'm sure you don't want to miss our guest. Stay tuned. Please don't go anywhere. Welcome back to the show. The show is still perspectives, like you know. And if it happened, it's happening or it's been talked about, we bring you the full details here on perspectives. Yes, INEC released a consolidated report of 84 million Niger Nigerians that are registered voters. We all know that we have over 190 million Nigerians and um, INEC has confirmed that out of 190 million Nigerians, approximately 190 million Nigerians, we have 84 million, 84 million registered voters. Out of those 84 million registered voters, we have 52.86% as uh, males and we have 47.14% as female. 51.11% at um, youth. Yes, following this report, we're going to be talking about this INEC, you know, consolidated report this morning. Today we'll be discussing INEC consolidated report and its implication on the 2019 elections. We will be doing this this morning uh, with no other person than the immediate past Lagos State APC Chairman, Chief Henry Ajomale. Good morning, sir. Good morning. I hope I call that well, sir. <laughs> Ajomale. Good morning, sir. It's good to have you on the show this morning. It's a pleasure, sir. You're welcome to the show. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Uh, we realize that um, from the report, it is quite obvious that the youth, you know, are participating more since we have um 51 percent of them you know 51.11 percent of them you know <laughs> that, uh, they're, 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 um 
Yes, I'll be sending what's happening to expect in 2019. Are we to expect a, a, a paradigm shift, you know, in the, you know, electoral, you know, process as in, you know, uh, those that will be elected into offices, maybe the presidential or the gubernatorial, you know, positions, should we be expecting, do you feel that with this rate of youth that we have, you know, being involved in registration, do you think there will be a, a kind of a paradigm shift in those that will be elected into the office? Sir? Yes, I, I believe so. I believe there must be because... Uh, uh, the time is right for the youth to take part in the election because it is always the belief of uh, every progressive that the youth must take over the mantle of leadership of this country. But unfortunately, a lot of them are drawing back and they have been drawing back for long. But I'm happy now that they are coming out to, to do what is right, what is, they are expected to do. And uh, if they participate this time, but I am not sure whether they are strong enough in conviction in order in to, to vote for the right, uh, the, the, their own, their own. I don't think they are matured enough to be able to do that. They will still vote for the old party. Whereas I expect them that this time around they will use their strength to be able to vote right. Vote right, when we talk about vote right, is it uh, to do with the leadership of the party or leadership of the country? So these are things that uh, they must be bold enough to be matured enough. Uh, I'm sure they are going to get that, but I don't think this time. Hmm, <laughs> Chief is saying that he doesn't think this time, which means you, you feel that um, they don't have the, the, the inner strength yeah. Enough. To there do are a lot that. of things. But do you think, what well, chief? Do you do you really feel that even the parties themselves? Do you feel they've been friendly to youth, considering the fact that even those that are being elected into offices, you know, you find out that we have just limited number of um, youth. Most most importantly, when you look at the the ruling parties or the most common parties, we talk about the, the APC. Parties, exactly. Yes. We talk about the APC and the PDP. You look at all the millions of naira's naira that. You know, you, you, they are being told to, you know, to bring for the, you know, the forms and nomination everything, forms. the nomination forms and everything. It's not, it, it, it doesn't, it doesn't look as if it's been friendly to, to youth. And you, at the end of the day, we find out that you don't find youth in those positions. How do you expect it's youth to? It's not that. I don't believe that this is a question of money alone. Okay. There's more uh, uh, things that are connected to this than money. You know, some people who have established themselves for a long time, a lot of people know them in their community, in, uh, in their streets, on their streets and in their society. They know them and they know that uh, they have been running all about for one position or the other. But these are the youth who have just started. They don't know them. They don't have the money. But how do you convince them? Even their own youth, how do you convince them to vote for themselves? Mm -hmm. That is still a lot of work to do, to convince themselves that this is the time for them to take over the mantle of leadership. Habib, you want to say something? Yes, talking about um, conviction and the youth participation, now we are having 51.1%. Could this um, increase so to say, be as a result of the not too young to run bill that was um, recently passed into law. And um, if that has just been passed into law and we are not having youth, 2023, are we to expect a major shift? That, that is exactly what I, I, I believe. But they are not going to allow it to, to end after the election. They still have to continue working towards 2020. And they must make 2023, they attack it. Oh, which means it's a process. Yes, it's a process. So are you saying, Chief, that 2019 is not the time for the youth? They should wait till 2023? Is no, that what no, you're saying now? 2019 is too close for what they can achieve. Because the, 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 the older party has entrenched themselves. So far, it's too short for them to be able to make serious impact. And that is why I think they must go back and do their homework very well. 
and prepare for the next election. That is the only way they can be able to capture the party and uh, the leadership. Okay. If, if I may <laughs> ask, what role does the party have to play? I mean, a conscious role to say, yes. let's encourage the youth. Yes. I, I believe that the party should allow majority of their candidates to be youth. Okay. If you want to encourage them. You bring them in and then train them and ensure that they are a majority. Uh, look, this younger generation are vibrant, they are strong. Where you cannot, uh, elderly one cannot walk, you cannot jump, you cannot run. <laughs> but these are the young boys that can do that job. And I believe that they are in a vintage position now to be able to take over the mantle of the dash. Let the elderly one rest and allow this younger one to drive the economy of this country. They are, they are, they are, they are qualified enough. You have them PhD, you have a, a master's degree holder, and now you even find a lot of Nigerians who are having the, this master's degree holder. There is no doubt that if you give them that opportunity, that they will perform. And that's always my own belief, that you must give the younger one the opportunity to climb that leadership position and see how you can guide them. Your role of the elder now, as far as I believe, is to stand uh, and watch and direct them. Okay. If they fall, they will stand up. And if they don't make mistakes, they cannot learn. So between now and 2023, I believe they must have learned uh, the ropes. They must have gone through some uh, changes to take over the leadership. Otherwise, uh, you will still find them uh, in the same position because um, I believe the 20 or whatever amount of money that they are asking is not, to me, is not too much. If the elderly one can find that money, there is no reason why this young, vibrant, dynamic, so they should not allow that one to, do, to distract them. Or to disturb them. Uh, Chief, I beg to, I beg to want to disagree with you on that fact. You, want to, you, you say a, a youth, probably a, a, a 35 years old uh, man, probably that left our institution at the age of, uh, let's say, 26, 27, and he's been trying to, you know, get the pieces that, of that's his life. No strike along the line. That, exactly, you know, to get the pieces of his life, trying to, you know, build something alongside. He could have also been, you know. Uh, impacting on his immediate society in his own little way Student and, union and exactly stuff. and all that we can see that even the present um, um, national chairman of um, of um, um, APC um, Adam Sashomale he, he was one time uh, NLC chairman yes, yes, yes. Uh, and all that and all that you know they had a pre uh, they have antecedents you know, which the youth also could have been doing. But you now tell them at that point, you know, come with 20 million naira, come with 50 million naira, all this ridiculous money, when all he even had have in his, what well, all that is in his bank account is not even up to 5 million naira. And you, you, want to, you also have to consider the fact that after this, he's still going to spend money for the, you know, the, 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 uh, the um, process to, uh, f before the elections. Do you feel, and you keep laying emphasis on the fact that, okay, 2023, there could be a chance, which means it seems you have the belief that no, for the youth, 2019 is a no-go area, despite the fact that we have 51.1% of them as registered voters. No, I'm, I'm telling you what it takes to take over the leadership. Okay. If you don't learn the ropes, you don't know what they are doing, you jump into it, you will jump out. Hmm. Look, the party, they have a young uh, progressive party or something now. Okay. Ask them how much do they pay for the presidential, for the House of Representatives. It's the same, virtually the same. And they paid it. Those who are contesting on that, that platform paid it. But what I'm saying is that not all of them are going to have this money. Even if they are contesting under these political parties we are talking about, even let's assume that the two main political parties, PDP and APC, even those who are there now, they are younger generation. They are younger ones. 
those who won the primaries are still young people and they were able to afford it. I am not saying that that money uh, should be the determining factor. No. They must be able to reduce it to accommodate those who are coming in. But I don't uh, 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 expect the layabout just because they are young, they are young, they don't have money, then they will go, you should go out and contest election. When they get there, what do you think they are going to do? Okay, Chief Henry Adjomale, the former immediate uh, past chairman of the Lagos State APC, is being in the studio with us and will be talking about the, the, the latest um, released um, report of the INEC about um, the number of um, voters, registered voters, in Nigeria, he believes that yes, for the youth to take place, it's a process. It's not something that um, will just you know happen in one day or in one time. Away from the youths now, uh, Chief. According to INEC Chairman Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, he said that out of 168 rerun and by elections conducted since the end of 2015 elections, he said only six women at, has been elected yet. This recent report that we have, that we are talking about, we have 47.14% of the registered voters, are, they are women. Why do you think we have a huge gap in terms of women being elected into positions, well, despite having a lot of them as registered voters? Well, I, I, I will not know that, but I think uh, <laughs> women are the enemy of themselves. Oh my yeah. God, I keep hearing because women are the enemies the of themselves. Yeah, I keep hearing women are the enemies it's true. of themselves. It's true. Oh because my God, this if, is a great challenge for, for example, all the women out there. That's exactly what I'm saying. This is a challenge. You know, you let's see. I'm getting married. Okay. I'm married now, and I want to go and contest the election. Okay. You don't expect my wife to go and vote for. My <laughs> opponent. <laughs> what an analysis! <laughs> you don't expect her to go and vote for my opponent. Certainly, she will want to vote for me. Okay. Especially if my if my opponent is a woman. Oh my God! Okay. So <laughs> that true. is the society. So, but are you now telling me? That or you want to send her away from home? But chief, chief, mm -hmm. on a lighter mood. Because I am your wife doesn't mean I must vote for you. Yes, yeah, I agree. Like, it's it's, it's, it's a free world. I agree with you. But don't send her away from her matrimonial home. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Because it is natural okay. that she too, if the husband becomes a member of the House of Representatives or Senate oh. that is contesting for, <laughs> if he wins and you did not vote for her, what do you expect the man to do? Oh my God. And, and the mother too, if the man is... <laughs> exactly. See? So, yeah, oh so, my God. There are so many... Uh, so uh, many factors working factors working, working against the against women just because no women but working against that notion mm. that women must vote for themselves there are so many factors mm. that is is blocking women from achieving this uh, objective mm. i for me i am woman gender sensitive i want women to to be in position at least to have half of what we have oh a, a, i want to give you the recap for that of a, <laughs> no it's not new it's not new what i'm saying is not new that i've been saying that that gives them the opportunity they may even be better than what we are having now to me i have worked under uh several women when i was in the civil service so i know how active they are they they have the brain they have everything and i enjoy working for them working under them so there is no reason why you put a woman somewhere that you cannot, she will not be active. Especially if she's educated, she'll be active. And one thing about it, she'll be disciplined. And she wants you to be disciplined. Hmm. That's the most important point. Can be the turning point. If the woman decided to stage the revolution by voting for themselves. Okay, so maybe we'll have another Benji. <laughs> <laughs> so to me, I believe that uh, uh, we must work on it to be able to convince our women, our women folk, to take it very seriously, and the youth to take it seriously. Otherwise, 
the older generation will continue to embed, embed themselves inside this politics and they will want don't want to go oh viewers at home okay. the show is still perspectives i we want to go on a short break we're still with chief henry ajomale in the studio please don't go anywhere stay tuned we'll be right back The show is still perspectives. Yes, we talked women, women, women in politics before we went on the short break. Quickly, yeah, because our time is fast spent. Before we go on to uh, before we go on to our hashtag segment, quickly I want to ask Chief this one question. So many controversies surrounding the recent announcement of Amina Amina Zakari, you know, as the chairperson of the coalition center. What's your take on this? I have no problem with that. Because I know that the woman is highly qualified. She's a professional. Why is it, why is it because uh, she has one kind of relationship which has uh, gone sore uh, many years ago. You are still punching that on her. So you don't feel that it's going to affect her judgment? It is, it is her work that is important. She has been doing this job as a commissioner for a long time. And she has uh, done a lot of elections without any problem. Why is it now? But, uh, and what she is she even doing has no imp serious impact on the totality of the election. Quickly, yeah, I just want to say that, okay, what of, um, just for the sake of being seen to be fair, yeah. because concerns are Just to the psyche of Nigeria. So that to no, give no, people confidence. No, no, let me, tell me the psyche that because the man uh, father married the sister of uh, the president is that the reason why the emotional attachment the, it's not there's nothing emotional about it it, it is like any other job it's that, like any other job anyway it, uh, rules that says the woman must not be because she's related to someone hmm. so you you to me i don't see if she's a professional and she's doing her job the best way she understand. I know the one controversial in 2015. Even it is not this president that employed her. In 2015, she did the yo-yo man job. Yes, yes. At that time, mm. so she was part of the system, and nobody said she should not be there. Why now? Hmm. Why now? She was there in 2015. Exactly. So why would why can't she be there now? It's a job and there are rules to the job. Yes, uh, we can't take more than that. Quickly, we are going to rush through our hashtag. You know, we don't leave this show without telling you what's going on on social media. Uh, first off, on social media, we're going to be talking about official ASU. Yes, that ASU has come out to say that at, um, uh, at ASU Nigerian president has the following information for the general public it says our members said they want to see evidence of satisfactory implementation of all that at asorok have proposed before the strike can be called off as i say they won't see this come on before they move on the strike in this in the first place is about <laughs> failed promises so they're making another promise so, so, <laughs> so uh, as he says show me money before i move on what yes, do you Okay, what do you want to say quickly, sir? You want to say something about that? Well, <laughs> it's like what is going on in the US now. Okay, okay, <laughs> okay, quickly, what do you have on the Okay, we're going to the battleground now. Nigerian Army. Yes, the official handle of Nigerian Army posted this tweet yesterday, and it's a good one. The gallant troops of the newly formed Nigeria Army Special Forces Command, NASFC, operations, Operation. Zafia Doli that given the terrorists that attacked troops location in Baga 
a bloody nose. Wow, that's a good so one. Been able it's to been, fight back yes, because you know we've been having issues. Even you find that you will realize that at the recent time, the uh, international community, you know, yeah, had to withdraw some of their, 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 their aid, aid workers, aid which is their, not which a good, is not good one for Nigeria. So I think, I think it's a good this, one. This give us some confidence. Yes, guys. yes, yes. I think it's, it's a good one for Nigeria. And yeah. finally, on our hashtag segment this <laughs> morning, <laughs> we're going to talk about. We can't do without talking about him at this time, at this point in time. Well, but not from him now from the Nigerian police. At Nigerian police force came with a tweet saying that Senator Dino Milaye under investigation by the police for criminal conspiracy and attempted culpable homicide has been taken from the police hospital to another government hospital for further information. So he wasn't weeks <laughs> away. <laughs> exactly. He's not lost in that Marked man came no, to... No, 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 no. <laughs> He's not. He's trying to clarify. Uh, so our honourable senator is not lost. He's not. He's not missing. He's, and he's alive. He's alive. And he's I've alive. I've been well. <laughs> well, I don't know. There's a question mark that you know that on perspective, if it's happened, it's happening, or it's being talked about, we bring you the full details yeah. here on perspective. Today we are we were talking about the consolidated report brought by. INEC. And doing this, we did th this today with no one else but Chief Henry Ajomale, the immediate pastor, Lagos State APC chairman. Thank you, sir, for being with us on the show this morning. We appreciate you. Thank yes, we've been doing the show all together this morning. It's been a beautiful one. Running out of the studio, Abby, what do you have to tell the people? Yes, it's, it's good to be here. It's time, will, time will always fly when we are here. Honestly. We should continue with this discussion but then we'll, sir we'll, we'll be glad if you can come back when we request for you again sir it's a good pleasure thank you sir thank you yes and thank you viewers for, for staying to them being with us throughout the program yes the show is been perspectives yes before i leave the studio today i want to tell every one of us that the elections they are very nearby when you want to vote make sure you don't vote party vote personality vote antecedent vote wisely and vote right that is the basic thing because we can't afford to get it wrong in 20, in this year 2019 when the elections come around i've been your host this morning yinka kenny is my name till i come your way same time same station next week it's bye for now